Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with singing. Welcome from Christ Evangelical Lutheran Church in Kelowna, British Columbia, in transition. Our COVID-19 restrictions are gradually being eased and so we're making a transition back into our church building. But it will be a while yet, so thank you once again for joining us on this day. Today is the second Sunday after Pentecost, so we have now entered into the second half of our church year. The first half of the church year is the season of festivals and foundations. Advent, Christmas, Epiphany, Lent, Easter, it all culminates in the glorious festival of Pentecost. So in that first half of the year, we learn about the life of Jesus and the establishment of the church and all of the traditions that we know and love so well. Now we transition into the second half and you'll notice the color for this season is green. Green is of course a color of vegetation, of growth, and it is in the green season, as it is called, or also the time of the church, that we work at growing our faith. This year we're in year A in our lectionary, the year of Matthew, and so all of the Gospels, or most of the Gospels, come from the book of Matthew and lead us through Jesus's ministry in, of course, first century Palestine and how that ministry affects us here. Here also we're transitioning into summer and for the summer our national church, the ELCIC, has um, arranged that all of our bishops and their assistants have chosen a Sunday for which they will write the sermon and prepare the sermon for us. So periodically over the summer we will be having one of these bishops or their assistants bringing us the, the message for the day. And this Sunday we begin with a visit from our national bishop, Bishop Susan Johnson. And so we begin with prayer. God of compassion, you have opened the way for us and brought us to yourself. Pour your love into our hearts that overflowing with joy, we may freely share the blessings of your realm and faithfully proclaim the good news of your son, Jesus Christ, our savior and Lord. Amen. And now we all join in singing we are all we all are one in mission hymn 576 verses 1 to 3 let us begin A reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 19. On the third new moon, after the Israelites had gone out of the land of Egypt, on that very day they came into the wilderness of Sinai. 
They had journeyed from Rephidim, entered the wilderness of Sinai, and camped in the wilderness. Israel camped there in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God. The Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the Israelites, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possessions out of all the peoples. Indeed, the whole earth is mine, but you shall be for me a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the Israelites. So Moses came and summoned the elders of the people and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. The people all answered as one, Everything that the Lord has spoken, we will do. Holy Wisdom, Holy Word. Let's read Psalm 100 responsibly. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with singing. Know that the Lord God is God. It is He who made us, and we are His. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. Enter God's gate with thanksgiving, and His courts with praise. Give thanks to God. Bless God's name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever, and His faithfulness to all generations. Our second reading comes from the book of Romans. Paul writes, Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to his grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us. Because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel, according to Matthew, the ninth and 10th chapters. Matthew writes, Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were help harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. 
Then Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First Simon, also known as Peter and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector. James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These 12 Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey, or two tunics or sandals or a staff, for laborers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who in it is worthy, and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Truly, I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment for that town. See, I am sending you out like sheep among wolves. So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues. And you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say, for you are to say what you are to say will be given to you at that time. For it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Brother will betray, will betray brother to death, and a father his child, and children will rise up against parents and have them put to death, and you will be hated by all because of my name. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next, for truly I tell you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is a real pleasure to be able to worship with you in this way today. This time of pandemic is and has been very challenging for all of us and tiring as well. Your bishops wanted to make sure that our rostered leaders could take their vacations for much needed rest and so and that congregations would still be able to gather in worship. That is why we and the Synodical Assistants to the Bishop are providing these sermons for use today through the middle of September. Because the harvest is plentiful, but quite frankly, the workers are getting exhausted. In our Gospel lesson today, we hear that Jesus has compassion on the crowds that were following him. I hope that during this time of pandemic, you have felt that Jesus is close to you and having great compassion for you and for all of God's children who are struggling with the pandemic, but others also with racism and police brutality, with homelessness, with hunger, with war and displacement, with loneliness and isolation, and so many other troubles. Jesus continues to come to us to each and every one of us and speaks to us a message of hope, of love, of grace, and of peace. But that is not all that Jesus says to us. 
Jesus is still calling us, each and every one of us, to go out into the harvest to proclaim the good news in word and in deed. And please hear me now, Jesus is not just calling pastors, no. This is a call to each and every one of us who wants to be followers of Jesus. I know that some of you may already be coming uncomfortable and perhaps some of you are cringing now. And it gets worse. Jesus warns us before we go that it is not going to be easy. In fact, it may be very hard. However, let's remember that the realities of first century Palestine, living under Roman occupation and oppression, and our 21st century Canadian context are very different. Granted that there are worries and dangers now as provinces are opening up, we will still need to take COVID-19 very seriously as we head out into the harvest. So today, Jesus might not warn us about the possibilities of flogging or being dragged in front of governors and kings. Jesus might instead warn us to wear masks and to wash our hands frequently and to keep two meters apart and to gather in groups of 25 people indoors and 50 outdoors as long as there is safe physical distancing, or at least that's what Jesus might say to us here in Manitoba. Our current reality is that we have learned during the pandemic time that there are people hungry, hungry for hearing the good news. I heard stories across our church of inactive members returning to participate in online worship, of total strangers, perhaps seekers, joining in worship, of more people joining in online worship than had been present when we were gathering together live. I have also heard about amazing generosity, both in terms of the ongoing financial contributions to the church and other charities, but in people contributing to be willing to contact isolated members, to provide worship and music leadership, to continue to run feeding and other outreach programs within social guidelines for safety and so on. We have proved in this crisis that we can be creative and responsive to God's call. We are reaching out and sharing God's news in ways that we have never imagined and with effects that we have never experienced before. Let's face it, we have been struggling for a long time about how to take evangelism seriously in this time and place. And I remember, I remind you that evangelism, sharing the good news, is part of discipleship to which we all are called, each and every one of us. My mom and I have been reading Life Together by Dietrich Bonhoeffer. We are trying a COVID-19 book club via FaceTime. In his chapter on ministry, Bonhoeffer talks about evangelism as the ministry of proclaiming, one of the ministries that we are all called to take part in. For those of you who haven't read his book or who haven't read it for a long time, the other ministries Bonhoeffer calls us to are holding one's tongue, meekness, listening, helpfulness, bearing, as in bearing one another's burdens, and authority. Bonhoeffer acknowledges our difficulty with evangelism. He writes, added to the fear of one's responsibility to speak, there is the fear of the other person. What a difficult thing it often is to utter the name of Jesus Christ in the presence even of a brother. Who dares to force himself upon his neighbor? I think we resonate with Bonhoeffer's words. I know it's difficult for many of us and it's uncomfortable, but Bonhoeffer goes on to remind us it is our right and our responsibility to do so. What I'm trying to say is that in this topsy-turvy time that we have been living through, we have been shown that people are hungry for God's good news of hope and love and grace and of peace. People are yearning to know that Jesus has compassion on them, for them in their lives. 
I'm asking you, I'm pleading with you. Let us help each other to learn how to go out into the harvest so that we are ready when our cities and our provinces open up to listen to the needs and to the yearning and to the opportunities to share a word of good news and invite people to come and see, to come and worship, to know the love and compassion of Jesus. God bless and strengthen each one of you as we all continue to deepen our discipleship. Amen. As we offer our prayers this morning, please in the silences offer your own prayers. And to the bidding, Lord, in your mercy, would you please respond, hear our prayer. Loving God, we do not belong to ourselves, but to you. You call us by name, you say to us, follow me. You call us in the world. You speak to us through the voices of prophets, politicians, and poets. We pray for those who challenge our complacency by speaking out against injustice, racism, and oppression. We pray for all those willing to march in our streets 
in order to speak the truth to power. We pray that the world and its leaders will be able and willing to hear the rage and frustration of those who have been so wronged for so long. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You call us in the church. You speak to us through the voices of your faithful people, both lay and cleric, as well as the technological people who so willingly give of their time so that worship can continue in these unusual times. We pray for the church throughout the world and for all its faithful servants. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You call to us through the voices of those with whom we live and work, play, and with whom we isolate. We pray for all those whose conversations shared with us challenge us to show your love and your care in our everyday lives to all with whom we are in contact. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You speak to us through the voices of our first responders, health care and long-term care workers. We pray for their well-being and are grateful for what they are teaching us about courage in the face of adversity. We are also grateful for their inspiring care of those with whom they work and serve. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You speak to us through the voices of our children. We pray for them and for their teachers as they go back to school. We remember especially those who will not be able to graduate in the way they would wish, and we pray for them as they now go out into a world that is so different from the one that they might have expected. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You speak to us saying, follow me through a lifetime of loving and giving. We pray for all those who need our support, especially those who are ill, sorrowful, or afraid. We remember particularly all those suffering with the COVID virus, with continuing isolation, and with unemployment and we give thanks for the continued flattening of the viral curve in British Columbia. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You speak to us saying, follow me into the kingdom of light, joy and peace. We pray for all the, those who have died, and we pray especially this morning for all those who mourn. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You speak to us through the voices of all those whom we have forgotten or ignored, and we pray for all of them.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy One, who never fails both to hear and answer prayers that are sincere, let not our hearts be upon the world when our hands are lifted in prayer, nor our prayers end upon our lips. Help us to go forth with strength and with power to work your will in the world, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you once again for spending this time with us today. We trust and hope that this service has touched you and brought you meaning and hope and encouragement for whatever lies before you in these coming days. And now receive God's blessings. May our loving God bless you and keep you this day and all days. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. And now we join in our closing hymn, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light. <laughs>